In my past life, I was a complete hopeless romantic, alienating everyone around me for the sake of Lily. For ten years, I lived with her in a basement, sharing the hardships of eating the simplest of meals, starting from scratch, and rising from nothing to success. But even with such wholehearted devotion, all I got in return was her betrayal. Yet, I remained stubborn, even foolishly thinking I could punish her by ending my own life. I succeeded, but I regretted it. Fortunately, I was given a second chance, a chance to be reborn with my body. This time, I'm determined to save my foolish, love-blinded self, to keep him away from that deceitful woman and scoundrel, and to live a better life. Chapter 1. Please, Jacob. Please, live. You must live. It was my fault. I was the one who got carried away and got involved with Domingo. He only wanted to scam me out of my money. How could I have hurt you for such a scoundrel? How can I go on living without you? You might as well take me with you. Maybe when someone dies, all the fog clears from their mind. At this moment, my soul hovered above, watching Lily, her face smeared with tears and mucus, and I felt nothing but disgust. How did I never realize before how unattractive she looked? She had been the campus beauty queen for four years in a row. Being so face conscious, if it wasn't for her looks, I might not have loved her for so long. The Grim Reaper, who had come to take my soul, stood by my bedside, watching as Lily clung to my lifeless body, wailing in grief, and asked me helplessly, with such a scene, is your wish not fulfilled? Why do you linger in this world, unwilling to leave? Yes, seeing Lily kneeling before my bed, repenting and full of regret, had always been my obsession, hadn't it? So why do I still refuse to leave? I was satisfied the moment I died, wasn't I? My gaze passed over the woman in front of me, who was slapping her own face while crying hysterically, and shifted to the hospital room door. There stood an elderly couple, weary from their journey, the man's hair was completely white, his hand gripping the door frame with bulging veins. The woman, upon seeing my body, couldn't even stand, collapsing on the spot, they were my parents, who had rushed from our hometown after hearing the news of my death, they didn't get to see me one last time, to hear me speak, I regret it. Chapter 2 Thanks to the Grim Reaper, I was reborn. I now have the chance to save the version of myself that hasn't died yet in this life, but the frustrating part is, I was reborn with the same body I had at the moment of my death. Right now, I'm dragging my emaciated, skeleton-like frame, struggling to make my way to the elevator. By the time I returned to the home I had in my past life, my hands were trembling as I unlocked the door, and I was already drenched in sweat, my clothes soaked through. As soon as the door opened, the current version of me, Jacob, ran out of the room with a look of surprise. Lily, are you back? At this moment, Jacob had just returned from the hospital after undergoing an endoscopy due to his constant nausea and loss of appetite. He doesn't know yet. Tomorrow, when he goes to the hospital to get the report, he'll hear the doctor's grim prognosis, his days are numbered. As I looked at the lively version of myself in front of me, my eyes welled up with tears. I was just about to introduce myself when I saw his face change dramatically. He picked up his phone and, with a wary look, started making a call. Hello, 911. There's a suspicious person trespassing in my home. Wait, wait, wait. I hurriedly interrupted, using a weak voice to call out my own name, which was also his. Let me introduce myself. I'm also Jacob. You went to Jiangqing Kindergarten, wet the bed at seven and got spanked by your mom, and hired someone to pretend to be your dad at the parent-teacher meeting when you were ten. Stop. 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 He hung up the phone, looking at me suspiciously. Say that again. Who are you? I told him I was Jacob. From a not-so-distant future, he didn't believe me at all. I get it. Two, given my current skeletal appearance, I really don't look like a good person. Just call me old Jacob. Based on our physical age, I'm a bit older than you. Jacob frowned deeply. Maybe I should take you to the hospital or a shelter. I flatly refused and planted myself on the couch, refusing to leave. He was furious. Dude, this is my house. You showing up out of nowhere is really disturbing. Your house is so big, and you live here alone. One more person won't hurt. He laughed angrily, I'm married, okay, when my wife comes back and sees you, she's going to freak out. Wife, you mean the wife who's eager to become Domingo's daughter's stepmother? Jacob was shocked, you, how do you know that, how do you even know about Domingo? I rolled my eyes, I told you, I'm you from the future, do you think I don't know what your wife and Domingo are up to? Only then did Jacob reluctantly let me stay, albeit with suspicion. Chapter 3, The Next Day Jacob had to go to the hospital to get his endoscopy report. He called Lily countless times. Unfortunately, all he got was a busy signal. He sat there dumbfounded, clutching his phone, his face ashen, not even reacting as I waved my hand in front of his eyes. His dumb, love-blind, gullible expression made me angry just looking at it. 
No wonder my good buddies from the past eventually stopped talking to me. This stupid, love addled behavior was just too much to bear. I couldn't help myself. I slapped him across the face. Jacob finally snapped out of it, clutching his face in disbelief. You. You hit me. Yeah, because you look like you deserve it. I already told you. Lily is eager to become Domingo's daughter's stepmother. She's too busy to deal with you. Jacob's face turned pale. What nonsense are you spouting? Why would she become someone else's stepmother? We're going to have our own kids. I sighed. This wasn't nonsense. In my past life, I called Lily countless times, sent her countless messages, and she ignored every single one. It wasn't until nightfall that she finally replied with a single message. Jacob, you're suffocating me. I later found out that the reason Lily didn't answer my calls or messages was because she was having an abortion. She wanted to get rid of our child so she could get back together with Domingo and then divorce me. Can you believe how ridiculous and absurd that is? Thinking about it now, I really regret not slapping her a few more times in my past life. Seeing Jacob's reluctance to believe me, I grabbed him and dragged him to the hospital. Still not convinced. Huh. Fine. Let's get your endoscopy report, and then I'll take you somewhere. Chapter 4 I'm sorry to inform you of this, but the reason for your frequent vomiting is due to a stomach tumor. Here are your CT and endoscopy reports. It was the same doctor who had delivered the bad news to me in my past life. He looked at Jacob with a hint of sympathy in his eyes. Jacob was stunned. He stared blankly at the thin stack of papers in his hands, his mouth opening and closing. How? How much time do I have left? It's hard to say. The pathology suggests stage 4, but judging by the CT scan, the spread and metastasis aren't too severe. There's still a chance. My recommendation is to get admitted as soon as possible for chemotherapy. In hopes of reducing the stage to make surgery an option for tumor removal, he walked out of the consultation room in a daze. I followed behind him, wearing a mask. Sigh. I remember when I first received this news in my past life. My mind went completely blank. By the time I snapped out of it, I had already dialed Lily's number. But at that moment, Lily's phone was turned off, and I couldn't reach her at all. The feeling was truly one of despair and helplessness. Jacob pulled out his phone, his hand trembling as he tried to unlock the screen. When I saw that he was about to call that deceitful woman Lily, I snatched the phone from his hand. Since the call wouldn't go through anyway, there was no need for him to experience that repeated disappointment and helplessness. But Jacob looked at me with a blank expression. Give me my phone back. No, I won't. If I give it back, you'll just call Lily, won't you? Can't you have some self-respect? You're a man. Stop running to her for every little thing. Can't you live without her? Give me my phone back. Give it back to me. He suddenly exploded, grabbing my shoulders. He shook me violently and yelled at me. His eyes were bloodshot, and veins bulged on his neck and forehead. The patients passing by all turned their heads to look at us. The pain from his grip was intense. So I forcefully threw the phone to the ground and stomped on it a few times. Let's see how you're going to call her now. He shoved me aside and frantically tried to pick up the pieces of the shattered phone. But as soon as he picked up the broken screen, I saw a tear fall to the floor. Jacob was crying. I let out a long sigh. I struggled to crouch down and gently patted Jacob's shoulder. Don't be afraid. I'll be here with you. Chapter 5. Honestly. I've never been a particularly strong person. Cutting ties with my parents to marry Lily and running off with her to start a life in Shenzhen was the most rebellious and bold thing I ever did. In my past life, when I found out that I had cancer and didn't have much time left, I was just as lost. I was only 30 years old. Yet the doctors had sentenced me to death, but back then, there was no other me to give me a hug and tell me, I'll be with you. For Lily, I had alienated almost everyone. That day, I wandered home like a lost soul, alone. After much difficulty, I finally got through to Lily and sent her my medical reports. I just wanted to hear a word of encouragement and comfort from the person I loved the most, but she only mocked me, saying it was just a trick to get her to come home and that the photos were poorly edited. Yet I had always suffered from erosive gastritis. Back when we had nothing in Shenzhen, I ruined my stomach, trying to build our business, attending one banquet after another to secure deals. The doctor said my cancer was closely linked to that. You could say that I got this terminal illness for her and for our future. But what was Lily doing at that time? She was getting an abortion. She was getting rid of our child so she could be with Domingo again and then divorce me. Can you believe how absurd and ridiculous that is? Looking back now, I deeply regret not slapping her a few more times in my past life. I was about to explain to Jacob that clinging to life is better than dying for nothing. But the next moment, Jacob lifted his tear-filled eyes to look at me. I. I don't want to get treated. What? I was so furious my eyebrows shot up. And I pointed at his nose. Yelling. What did you just say? Say that again if you dare. Jacob hadn't expected me to be so harsh. And he involuntarily hiccuped. I. I said I don't want to get treated. Why? 
you'd better have a good reason, and if you dare say it's because of Lily. As my tone grew increasingly dangerous, Jacob's expression became more and more uneasy. Great. I knew this lovesick fool was thinking that. I raised my hand high, really wanting to slap him to death. But he's a cancer patient, more fragile than most, so I can't slap him. I forced myself to calm down and grab the trembling Jacob, who was bracing for a hit. Come on, I'm taking you somewhere. I'm going to show you reality. Chapter 6 In the quiet, serene atmosphere of a private hospital, I pulled Jacob along, heading towards the gynecology ward. Jacob was confused. Why are you bringing me here? I kept a stern face and didn't answer. In my past life, about half a month after my cancer diagnosis, Lily came home looking exhausted. While gathering her laundry, I found a hospital admission slip. With trembling hands, I called the hospital to inquire. A nurse with a gentle voice informed me that Lily had undergone an abortion at their facility two weeks earlier. It's hard to describe how I felt at that moment. It was even more devastating than when I learned about my cancer. From that moment on, I began to hate Lily, thinking I could use my life to get back at her. But after I died, I deeply regretted it, because this woman wasn't worth sacrificing my life for. After my death, all I got from her were a few crocodile tears, nothing else. So, I needed the Jacob of this life to see clearly, and to see it early. Lily, at her core, is nothing but a deceitful woman. His current feelings of loss, pain, insecurity, and even his stubbornness, they're all meaningless. Nothing is more valuable than life itself. I knew that revealing all of this to Jacob, especially when he'd just received a death sentence from the doctor, might be cruel, but it was the only way to wake him up from his love-struck delusion. I led him to a VIP room, the door slightly ajar. From our vantage point, we could easily see a tall, elegant man sitting beside the bed. Jacob's pupils instantly contracted. It was Domingo, and he had his daughter with him. Auntie Lily, I'll agree to you being my mommy, but I don't want any brothers or sisters. Okay. The little girl, only three or four years old, spoke with innocent frankness. Domingo pretended to scold his daughter. Anna, don't say such things. This is Uncle Wong's baby, not your brother or sister. Jacob stood frozen, his body rigid. He looked at me in confusion. Listen carefully. I mouthed to him. The next moment, Lily's voice rang out. Domingo, you know I never wanted this child. Domingo sighed. Lily, I was too late. You got married, and now you're pregnant. The doctor said it's not advisable for you to conceive. This child is a miracle. We should just let it be. Lily's emotions flared up. No, why should we let it be? I've settled for ten years. I'll abort this child and divorce Jacob. It's not too late for anything. Chapter 7 Jacob trembled with rage, ready to burst into the room, but I held him back with all my strength. You stay here and listen to the rest. Inside the room, the despicable pair continued their conversation, but this will harm your body too much. I don't care, Domingo, as long as you don't mind, I'll treat Anna as my own daughter. She was so humble and servile before her unforgettable first love. I sneered at Jacob and whispered, See how low she stoops for another man, and what's her attitude towards you? Jacob's face turned ashen, I knew it all too well. Lily had married me out of desperation after Domingo abandoned her and moved abroad. She just needed someone to settle for. Her passion, gentleness, and care, those were reserved for Domingo. What about Jacob? He's been with you for ten years. After all, Lily scoffed with disdain. I've given him ten years of my youth. Isn't that enough? He should be grateful he could marry me. Damn it. Even after living an extra lifetime, hearing those words made me want to storm in and beat them both. I let go of Jacob's hand and gestured. Now you can go in. But to my surprise, the furious Jacob from a moment ago now had a look of utter hopelessness. He glanced at me, then, with a bitter smile, turned and walked away. What the hell? Aren't you going to confront them? Aren't you going to deal with this deceitful woman and her lover? I looked at my own frail, skeletal body, gritted my teeth, and swallowed my anger as I chased after Jacob, dragging my weakened frame. I struggled to catch up to him at the hospital entrance. Damn it. Why is he running so fast? Is he really thinking of ending it all? Did I overdo it with the shock? Panic started to set in. If he dies now, what's the point of my rebirth? Hey, Jacob, where are you going? Let's go back to the hospital for treatment. Don't follow me. Hey, just because you say don't follow doesn't mean I'm going to listen. I'm following. He turned back, saw me trailing him, and shouted at me in anger. Get lost. Chapter 8 I didn't say a word, just silently watched him. Jacob avoided my gaze and then buried his head, quickly walking two more blocks, seeing me still gasping for breath yet stubbornly following him. Jacob finally snapped. I told you to get lost, didn't you hear me? Why are you so damn annoying? I'm not going to the hospital, just let me die already. My wife doesn't care about me, so why are you sticking around, being such a pain? I've lost everything anyway. My marriage is a failure, 
I've got a terminal illness, and now my wife wants to abort our child. What's the point of living? I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself, and slowly walked up to him. Let's go back to the hospital. Are you deaf? Huh? I told you to get lost. I said I'm not getting treatment. If you keep pushing me, I'll just throw myself in front of a car right now. Slap. I raised my hand and slapped Jacob hard across the face. He clutched his cheek and glared at me in anger. I glared back, my chest heaving, and when I finally spoke, my voice was choked with emotion. Is Lily your entire world? Do you even remember that your parents only have one child, you? You're willing to die for a woman, but what about the parents who raised you? Lily may be your everything, but you are your parents' everything too. I'm begging you. You've wasted 10 years of your life. Can you stop being so blinded by love and see the people who truly care about you? Even if it's just for them, can you live on? Don't make them bury their child with their own hands. He silently followed me back to the hospital. I didn't want to talk to him either. I snatched the documents and ID from his hand and went to handle the admission procedures, then dragged Jacob to the oncology department. He seemed to have lost all his spirit, allowing me to do whatever I wanted without saying a word. I knew how hard it was to accept all of this. In my past life, it wasn't until after I died that I realized that clinging to life is better than giving up. My mom, my dad, they surely wished I could have lived, even if just for one more day, but when I was still alive in my past life, I didn't spare them a single thought. My mind was completely consumed by Lily. It wasn't until after I died that I felt guilt. It's a debt I'll never be able to repay. I don't want this Jacob to leave his parents with nothing but endless regret and sorrow. Chapter 9 I found a kind-hearted nurse and asked her to keep a close eye on Jacob, making sure he didn't do anything foolish in a moment of despair. Then I went downstairs to find a public phone. It took a long time to muster the courage, but with trembling fingers, I finally dialed the number that was etched deep in my heart. The phone rang and my heart pounded like a drum. Hello, who is this? The moment I heard my mother's familiar voice on the other end, I almost couldn't stop myself from crying. I quickly bit down on my hand. Taking several deep breaths, I managed to hold back the flood of tears. Who are you looking for? Did you dial the wrong number? My mother, puzzled by my silence, asked again, forcing myself to swallow the lump in my throat. I spoke in a muffled voice. Ma'am. Auntie, I'm Jacob's friend. Oh, you're Jacob's friend. Hello, hello. How, how is he doing lately? The moment I mentioned being Jacob's friend, her tone turned excited. My tears finally began to fall. In my past life, because my parents opposed my marriage to Lily, I angrily took the household registration book and secretly registered our marriage with her. After it was all said and done, my dad was so furious he wanted to sever our relationship. He said, that Lily girl isn't sincere with you. You two aren't on the same page. What's the point of a life like that? But I was stubborn. At the time, I thought it was enough just to marry the person I loved. I believed she would eventually be moved by my dedication. So, in my past life, I married Lily with a heart full of naive bravery. As expected, our life was a mess, and my dad's words came true. I was too ashamed to contact my parents. As a result, they never got to see me before I passed away. It's one of the biggest regrets I had in life. I don't want Jacob to lose the last moments he could spend with his parents because of his pride and stubbornness. Auntie, Jacob, he's sick. I've been thinking about it and I think I should tell you, you Ann. Uncle, you should come see him. There was sudden silence on the other end. After a long pause, a trembling male voice came through, it was my father. My dear child, what kind of illness does Jacob have? Don't hide it from us. Big tears rolled down my cheeks. It's, it's stomach cancer. Chapter 10. Perhaps the only love in this world that asks for nothing in return is the love of parents. The afternoon after Jacob was admitted to the hospital, his parents arrived, they found Jacob in his room receiving liver protection treatment and preparing for chemotherapy. The three of them hugged each other tightly and cried. I hid quietly outside the hospital room, watching the now hunched backs of my parents, my eyes welling up with tears. How deluded must I have been in my past life to hurt my parents so deeply for a deceitful woman like Lily. As I looked at their backs, I slapped myself hard. With my parents here, Jacob should no longer do anything foolish for Lily. I took one last, reluctant look at my parents, wiped away my tears, and left. Next, I had to do what I should have done in my past life. When Jacob wasn't paying attention, I took his phone and returned to the home Lily and I shared. I went to the study, where I knew Lily kept her tablet. She had set this device as a trusted device on WeChat, so I could log in directly. I opened her chat history with Domingo and sneered. Lily, I regret it. I'm only now realizing that you are the one I truly love. Domingo, I feel the same way. One wrong step led to another. My biggest regret in this life is marrying Jacob, even though he's done so much for me. I'm still so unhappy. A marriage without love is like a grave. 
I understand you. It's okay. I'll always be by your side. Expecting nothing in return. Message after message. It was all Lily and Domingo's long complaints about their suffocating marriages. I had already seen these in my past life. So now, I could calmly take screenshots of all these records. Over the 10 years Lily and I had been in Shenzhen, we had started a company together. The company, Little Ant Technology, specializes in developing smart home appliances. In the past two years, this sector had experienced explosive growth, and the company's valuation had skyrocketed. We had secured Series C funding and had already engaged investment banks and law firms to prepare for an IPO. Going public on the star market was within reach, but I knew Lily wouldn't let me have a share. In half a month, she would come home, throw a divorce agreement at me, and offer me only a million yuan. Back then, blinded by love, I didn't even ask for any shares in the company. Other than my title as a co-founder, I was basically just drawing a salary. Ten years of hard work, and all I'd get was a million yuan. And a million yuan wasn't even enough for Lily to hire a department director. So, this time around, I wasn't going to let her use that divorce agreement to insult me. Instead, I was going to ruin her reputation first. Chapter 11 I logged into Little Ant Technology's official account and posted all the screenshots at once. When Domingo returned to China, Lily had arranged for him to take the CFO position at the company. He came in as an external hire, demoting the original finance director, who had been with us from the start. This move had already caused quite a bit of discontent within the company. I went all out on the official account. Not only did I make a video exposing Lily and Domingo's affair, but I also revealed that Lily planned to abort our child for her affair with Domingo. Then I posted my cancer diagnosis, playing the victim, and wrote posts condemning Lily. In no time, these posts blew up the internet. At that moment, Lily had just finished her abortion and was resting in the hospital. By the time she got the news, it was too late. I watched as Lily, who never used to contact me first, kept calling Jacob's phone. I ignored every call. The finance director called me, and I bluntly told him, there's an improper relationship between the CFO and the CEO. How do you think the IPO committee will react? There's no way we can go public like this. He immediately understood what I meant and became excited. Got it. Mr. Wang will vote to remove the CFO right away. Domingo was kicked out of Little Ant Technology in disgrace. Apparently, the blow hurt him, and he panicked, messaging me to distance himself. Jacob, this is too much. I know you have some misunderstandings about me, but doing this will only push Lily further away. You and your wife need to talk things out. Don't bring personal issues into work. They're two separate things. Ha. Huh. So he can get anxious too. When they were hurting others, neither Lily nor Domingo felt any guilt. It's only when their interests were threatened that they started to panic. These two scumbags kept calling and messaging me, but I didn't respond. I just quietly waited at home. Chapter 12. Sure enough, the next day, Lily came home. I could hear her heavy footsteps at the door, full of anger and ready to lash out. Domingo was with her, and through the door, I could hear him feigning concern as he tried to calm Lily down. Lily, take it easy. Try to talk things through with Jacob. You have to get him to make a statement that this was all just a misunderstanding. I quietly walked to the entrance and heard Lily's furious voice. If he has the guts, he should just divorce me. I'm fed up. What's the point of talking to him now? He's turned the company into a mess. He needs to leave with nothing. I've spoiled him for too long. Lily, he's not worth getting so angry over. You just had surgery. You shouldn't get too worked up. Let's talk some sense into him. And if that doesn't work, we can give him a little money to get rid of him. Money? Ha. Huh. I was going to give him a million yuan before, but now that he's messed up my company, I won't give him a single cent. Then, I heard the sound of the password lock opening. Lily stormed in, full of rage, with Domingo close behind her, worried she might do something rash. Neither of them noticed me leaning against the door. Jacob, get out here. I smiled slightly and raised the stun gun, ready to greet these two scumbags. Hi, I'm right here. Chapter 13 I watched coldly as Lily let out a scream before collapsing to the floor. Unconscious from the shock, Domingo, terrified, staggered backward. Jacob, calm down. Don't do anything stupid. It's not worth it over a woman. Lily and I really just had a few meals together. It's her. She's the one who can't let go of me. He stammered, trying to reach the door behind me. But unfortunately for him, once he was in, there was no way out. Domingo, in a panic, tripped over my outstretched foot and fell to the ground. He knelt in front of me and said, Jacob, I was wrong. I shouldn't have contacted Lily. Please forgive me. Lily is just an unfaithful woman. It takes two to tango. Right. You can't blame it all on me. We're both men. When something like this falls into your lap, you don't just pass it up. Right. I chuckled. Domingo. You were so bold when you were secretly sending me taunting texts. Is this all the courage you've got? Domingo really was a coward. Even in my weakened state, 
I could scare him into kneeling and begging. If he had dared to fight back even a little, I might have respected him more. Domingo was sweating profusely, his eyes darting around in fear. I swear, I'll leave the country and never come back. I won't fight you for Lily. I was just playing around with her, scamming her for some money. I'll return everything she bought me. I won't tell anyone what happened here. I crouched down in front of the sweat-drenched Domingo and smiled at him. I never said it was all your fault. That's why I'm dealing with both of you, isn't it? Just as Domingo was halfway through his plea, Lily began to stir on the floor and, waking up, overheard what he was saying. Her face twisted in disbelief. Domingo, what did you just say? Then she turned to me, Jacob, I. I wasn't. I didn't give them a chance to say anything more. I shocked them both unconscious again. Chapter 14 Lily would have begged for mercy, no doubt, but I wasn't going to waste time on useless apologies. Anyone can offer those meaningless, insincere apologies, but in my past life, I lost my life. After setting things up, I turned and left. When Domingo wakes up, he'll find himself heading to prison. He won't be able to explain it away, because in this life, Jacob is already in the hospital with a solid alibi, and once I disappear, there will be no trace of me left in this world. This is the last thing I can do for this life's Jacob. In my past life, I stubbornly refused treatment, partly because I was broke. I foolishly gave up my shares in the company and, since it was my own company, didn't care about not getting a salary. I even used Lily's supplementary credit card for my expenses. I put all my money into our home, and Lily still wanted to destroy me. Cancer treatment, chemotherapy, surgery, targeted therapy, or immunotherapy, all require a lot of money. Only if Lily is gone can Jacob, as her husband, legally inherit the assets and afford his cancer treatment, and he won't have to burden his elderly parents with huge medical bills. After I finished everything, the Grim Reaper appeared beside me and sighed. You originally loved Lily selflessly in your past life, which was a merit, so I gave you another chance at life. Lily and Domingo's actions were bound to lead to their downfall. Someone else would have punished them eventually. Why dirty your own hands? Do you realize that by doing this, you've cut off your path to reincarnation in the next life? I smiled faintly. Punishment delivered by others can't compare to the satisfaction of doing it yourself, right? I held out my hands for the Grim Reaper to cuff me in chains. Now, have you truly fulfilled your wish? I nodded, a satisfied expression on my face. Yes, I've fulfilled my wish. And, thank you. Chapter 15, Epilogue, Present Day Jacob's Perspective. I realized old Jacob was gone the day my parents suddenly showed up in Shenzhen. At that time, I was still drowning in the pain of Lily wanting to abort our child. Seeing my parents, whom I hadn't seen in ten years, standing in front of me with heads full of white hair. I was dumbfounded. They told me a friend had informed them that I had cancer. That damn old Jacob. I hadn't wanted to tell my parents, but when I saw my mother's red, swollen eyes, I couldn't hold back my tears of grief. How embarrassing. A thirty-year-old man still crying like a child. I thought my dad would scold me like he did when I was a kid. A man doesn't cry. But instead, he trembled as he touched my head choking up as he apologized for saying we should sever our father-son relationship. The three of us held each other and cried. There's no such thing as lasting grudges between parents and children, especially when facing life and death. What can't be forgiven? I reconciled with my parents. I wanted to introduce them to old Jacob, but he never showed up again. I quietly asked the nurse, but she looked at me in confusion. Who are you talking about? I was stunned. On the day I was admitted, it was old Jacob who had arranged for the nurse to come. How could she not remember him? And then there was the phone I had been searching for. The next day, I found it on the bedside table. It was baffling. I distinctly remembered searching that bedside table last night, and there was no phone in sight. I suddenly remembered what old Jacob had said when we first met. He said he was from the future, that he was the future me. Could such a strange thing really exist in this world? When old Jacob comes back to the hospital, I'm definitely going to ask him about it. But I waited and waited, and instead of him, the police showed up. Jacob. The female officer taking the statement was sharp and confident. My hopeless weakness for pretty faces kicked in when I saw her clear, righteous expression. Even the discomfort from the chemotherapy seemed to ease a bit. When she asked the question again, I mumbled a vague response. Yes, that's me. What's your relationship with Lily? Why bring up that wretched woman's name again? How unlucky. Oh, she's my cheating wife. The female officer hesitated for a moment. When did you get admitted to the hospital? I pointed to the patient information at the head of my bed. It's there. I don't remember the exact date. I was hooked up to chemo, my whole body aching, not really wanting to move. She stood up, checked the information, and jotted down the date in her notebook. How was your relationship with your wife? I rolled my eyes. What do you think? She cheated on me and can't wait to be the stepmother to her first love's kid. She thinks I'm in her way. But the officer pressed on. 
First love, is his name Domingo? My suspicion grew, and a hunch started to form. Yes, him. He's been entangled with my wife ever since he came back to the country with his daughter. The officer asked me a few more questions, mostly about my whereabouts. When she confirmed that I had been in the hospital the whole time, she left. My mom quickly stood up to see her out. They were gone for a while, and when they returned, my mom looked both relieved and disgusted. Mom, what's going on? What happened? Lily was killed by that man, her lover. What? So suddenly, the night my parents arrived in Shenzhen, I told them everything about my marriage to Lily. My dad was so angry he wanted to go after Domingo, and it took a lot of effort to calm him down. He was still planning to teach them a lesson after I got out of the hospital, but now this. Ever since my mom learned about my terminal illness, the frown lines on her face had deepened, but now they finally eased a little. With Lily dead, you can inherit her estate, and you won't have to worry about treatment costs anymore. That's right. Lily was an illegitimate child, abandoned by her mother at a young age and raised in an orphanage. That's why Domingo had initially looked down on her. If it weren't for the success of our business, Domingo wouldn't have given her a second glance. I was surprised to find that I wasn't particularly sad about Lily's death. In fact, I found myself thinking about Jacob more than I thought about her. During my time in the hospital, I gradually learned more details about the case. Domingo was identified as the murderer, but he kept insisting he was framed and that the real killer was me, Jacob. When the police questioned my mom about it, she cursed at them for a good half hour, because at the time of the incident, I had already been in the hospital receiving treatment, and the hospital surveillance proved I never left, but Domingo kept insisting that he had indeed seen me at home. He repeatedly urged the police to check the neighborhood surveillance footage from that day, but they didn't find any trace of me. The police suspected he was faking insanity to escape legal punishment. That lover is pretty bold. Lying through his teeth. You were too sick from chemo to even stand up. Yet he claims you sneaked back home to frame them. It's clearly a case of them turning on each other. I smiled. Maybe I really did kill them. You know. Another version of me. My mom clicked her tongue in disapproval. What nonsense are you talking about? By the way. Where's that boy who contacted us? Why hasn't he come to see you? We need to thank him properly. I tilted my head. Blinking back the tears welling up in my eyes. He's always been here. After eight grueling rounds of chemotherapy. Enduring hair loss. Jaundice. Ascites. Mouth ulcers rashes, blisters, and all the other complications and side effects. I finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I looked at the face in the mirror that was starting to resemble Jacob's skeletal features and smiled. So many times, I got through it by looking at that face in the mirror. My mom couldn't bear to see me suffer like that and often went out to cry. But I was confident because I knew there was another me up there, watching over me. I survived this painful and difficult journey. At my follow-up appointment, the doctor looked at my CT scans and marveled at my survival. It wasn't in vain. All the effort you put in. The chemo was successful. The metastasis has disappeared. And the primary tumor has shrunk by a third. You've successfully downstaged and are now eligible for surgery. Being eligible for surgery meant my survival chances had increased. The doctor, seeing my parents cry tears of joy, also smiled and patted my shoulder. You've done well. Go home. Rest up. And we'll proceed with the surgery. After that, a few more rounds of chemo for consolidation. And with targeted therapy you've got a good chance of making it five years. If the cancer doesn't recur within five years, it's considered cured clinically, and it's all thanks to old Jacob. I got up and slowly walked out into the garden. The sun outside was bright, and I closed my eyes, feeling the warmth of the sunlight. Jacob, thank you. A gentle breeze brushed against my cheek, as if he was saying, you're welcome.